Hello, my name is Dark Moon Dahl, and on Tuesdays I like to do the show sometimes called Art Talk. And Art Talk is a show where I share with you the art creations that I create, and I emphasize recycling and upcycling, and talk about how art can be very therapeutic for those who are stressed out and want to work on anger management. So, <clears throat> let me sit down. So today what I want to show you specifically is uh, these uh, bones that I made recently. They're not like, they're not like homemade bones, like sculpted bones, but they're, um, they're chicken bones. And a lot of times people will just throw them away. A lot of times they'll just throw them away, right? And then be done with it after they have their meal. I don't eat meat. Uh, I have somebody that lives here that does eat meat every now and then. And when they do, I save the bones. And what I do with the bones is sometimes I'll just clean them really good and dry them, and then put Mod Podge on them and add it to a purse that, actually a purse I recently sold had chicken bones on it. I also do this with them, I get elaborate. I'll paint them with designs on it. This one specifically was painted with nail polish and acrylic paints. So if you do this, you get to be outside where it's well ventilated. <clears throat> and that's what I'm going to do today, show you how to do that. Here's another one too that I use only acrylic paints with and uh, rhinestones just to show you some of the diversity that you can get with uh, using chicken bones. I like using the bones because it has an energy to it. It's the energy of the animal. And I do have Native American ancestry within me, so uh, I feel connected to if you're going to use anything having to do with animal, use a whole animal. I don't eat like, the only meat I eat is fish, but <laughs> I don't think I'm in the mood to use fish bones anytime soon, but yeah. But yeah, it's pretty cool. It's fun. It's decorative, and you can use it for jewelry, or you can use it to decorate your, um, your handbags and purses. So I'm going to show you how I do it, how I make, how I paint and design them. I'm going to use this, this color here. It's, a, it's like a purple color. I'll show you. And I'm pretty much just going to paint this bone with it. And then after I paint the bone and let it dry, I'm going to uh, put a design on it with some black acrylic paint. <clears throat> so I hope you guys are having a good day today. I hope you're taking out some time to do something really like creative and fun. Let's see, it just goes right on top of the bone. Ready-made paintbrush with using nail enamels. Some people don't like to use nail enamels to, for their nails. They like to just use it to paint with, especially the metallic colors. And because it's cheaper than buying acrylic paints or any other paints. And, but the only drawback is it's very toxic. So like I said, you wanna be outside when you're doing this so that you don't faint. <laughs> So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to be painting the bone here. You could put any kind of designs on it. You could put like a Dinkra design symbols on it. You could put peace symbols on it. Anything that represents something to you, represents your spirituality here. <clears throat> just get creative with it. Have fun with it. I like to feel the, the texture of the bone too. It's perfect for uh, like a canvas. The paint holds to it and really well, the nail enamel. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, you could get really elaborate and put um, rhinestones on it. So I've got two of these bones. I'm gonna paint two of them <clears throat> and let them dry. You wanna let them dry in between um, coats. You could put just one coat on there and then uh, put your painted design on and then Mod Podge it. And that'll seal in the design. So that way you don't have to do two coats of paint if you don't want to. But if you do do two coats of paint on each side, then you're gonna want to, um, I mean, you're not gonna have a problem with chipping as much. But this is what I did right now. See how it's purple, it's, let me turn it the other way. I did one side, colored it purple. And then what I'm gonna do is let it sit and dry and then I'll color or paint the other side of the bone. 
And if, like I said, I've got two bones to work with. And that's what I'm going to do. So, yeah, here's the other bone. You can also mix colors if you want it to. Um, just get, just have fun with it, you know. Because that's what, um, that's what art's all about. It's that time you take out for yourself to just do something fun and creative. And if you really want it to um, have more like a spiritual feeling to the bones, you can, you could even purchase crystals and, and uh, glue them on to it. I really do respect how uh, the Native Americans did use everything. When they went to go hunt for animals, they wouldn't just hunt just to eat it, eat the animal. They wouldn't just hunt the animal as a trophy like so many hunters do. They would hunt the, the animal for food, for the clothing, using the fur. They would use everything, the internal organs, everything was used, the bones, used to make jewelry. And uh, I'm sure this is not just a Native American tribe that has done that. A lot of indigenous cultures all over the world appreciated the animal in that way. They knew that they were going to eat it, they're not going to just waste every bit of it. And this animal sacrificed its life to help keep them going. So that was their appreciation of the animal by doing these things like making jewelry and art of these animals. So here's the, another one that I painted. So I'm gonna have to let these dry. But let me show you something. Like I showed you with the other ones. If you get any of this on your hands, you might want to have like um, some nail polish remover to get it off easily. Pretty cheap. But yeah, I showed you uh, one of these bones that I already did earlier. I haven't done the other side of it yet. So what I'm going to do right now is do the other side while those two purple colored bones are drying. So I'm just going to, see I have spiral design on here. I'm just going to do that. So if you want to get, get in with some really uh, tight designs on the bones, you can use a toothpick. A lot of the paintbrushes aren't fine tip enough for me when it comes to doing this kind of uh, work. So you might have to employ a toothpick, something with a pointy tip, where you can get a lot of fine details. So let me show you. Let me see if I can do it this way. But I'll show you. I'm going to just do this. Just gonna do a spiral on here. Hopefully you guys can see what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> if not, it's okay. But yeah, just a little spiral in there. And I think the simpler the designs, the better. If you get too intricate with something this small, it may end up not looking exactly how you want it. Yeah, it's like you don't wanna do like a portrait on there or something. <laughs> of course you wouldn't do that, that's kinda silly get a little more paint see how that's coming along like that and then make the spiral I'm gonna make the spiral go a little bit further but yeah you get what I'm talking about be creative you could put definitely do different designs on here other than what I'm doing and <clears throat> I really would like to make these bones into a necklace if you guys have any ideas you can leave them in the comment section below <laughs> I've attempted to make a bone necklace um, before, but not with chicken bones. Uh, I had these rib bones that I used, that I saved, and uh, washed them and designed them. But I ended up putting it onto a purse instead. But yeah, that's what I'm doing, is just decorating these until the purple beads dry. Oops, to the purple bones dry, I mean. <laughs> that would be cool to make these, if you could make bone beads as well. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, uh, the creativity never ends with me, really, <laughs> because um, when you're allowed to just relax and take some time out in your day and just focus on something that's creative, something that's not like bills, rent, and, you know, all these really crazy things that are going on in the world. You know, people have to find something that keeps them relaxed, keeps them focused on what's really important. So, 
that's what I'm doing with this here. Just doing some more spirals on there. So yeah, this is continuing. I'm just doing some more spirals on this. I was waiting for the um, other bones to dry. So this one I'm working on. And let me see if this is dry enough. Yeah, it takes a while to dry for these purple, for these um, bones to dry when you use um, nail enamels. When you use acrylic paints, it dries faster, just as a an aside. But but the reason why I like the acrylic, I mean the nail enamels, because they're metallic, and I like that metallic kind of glittery look to them. And it's like creating art on a budget <laughs> if you don't have enough money to get tons of paint to cut, you know, costs you can get nail enamels. I know they're stinkier and more toxic than acrylics or even oil paints, but if you don't have the money to get uh, regular acrylic paints, you can get these and to do little projects like this, you know, so. Yeah, definitely be in a ventilated area. A lot of people are creeped out by bones and things like this. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me. It's it's the human body. It's it's a part of the human. Uh, we have bones. You know what I mean. So there's a lot of artists that probably do deal with like use human bones and stuff in their artwork. Um, it's an energy to it. Definitely, there's an energy to what you're doing when you're incorporating another element, something that was once alive within your artwork. See, like that, there we go, that's how it's turning out. And then what I'll probably do is get some rhinestones to decorate it even further, like I did with this bone here, which I really like, um, to buy rhinestones in, in bulk or something, because I use a lot of rhinestones, and I like it. So let me see how these other bones are doing. As far as drying, yeah, they're pretty dry. I'm gonna turn these purple, purple bones over on the other side and paint them purple on the other side. So remember, the other side was blank. So you want to give them adequate time to dry on either side, just so it doesn't get smudged and it looks good. So, so yeah, I love paint. I love to create artwork outside because you're out in the natural elements and you're surrounded by beautiful uh, scenery, greenery, nature, stuff that makes people calm. And that's why I emphasize um, people trying art to help them to manage their anger. There's a lot of people that are angry these days, taking out their anger on people that have nothing to do with why they're angry. And the anger all stems from something so much more deeper, I believe. So yeah, I painted the other side of the bone. I'm gonna let it dry. And now I'm gonna paint the other bone. The other bone was, it's painted on this side. It means it has to be painted on the other side, so. <laughs> Plop, it just plopped right in the chair. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's a fun activity, art is because it doesn't demand anything of you. All it demands is your patience, really, I guess. And the more patient you are, the more you'll get really, really cool results afterwards when you finish it. <laughs> yeah, there's so much, so much anger and hate in the world right now and if more people just took time out and just took a break from all the social media stuff and computers, televisions, just get outside and just, uh, just chill out, do something fun and creative. Get your mind in a positive vibration. And yeah, oh, that's my cat coming down. <laughs> get your mind in a positive vibration and just create something wonderful. Something that, that'll inspire you and other people. So that's how that looks. Just gonna let that dry. And once again, while that dries, I'm gonna continue working on design on the other bones. So yeah, it's a process. It takes a while to um, 
let it dry and stuff. Some people will ask me, why, why does your art cost so much as it does? And like, believe me, it's way, it's not as much as I probably could charge for it. The reason why art costs as much as it does is because these artists put a lot of work and energy into what they do. And some of the materials may come pretty much for free if it's uh, like upcycled and recycled using those kind of materials. But the energy that goes into these creations is worth more than money can ever calculate, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Um, yeah, there was one time where I had put up a picture of a paper mache um, rabbit that I made, and that's how it's looking right now. And this person said, I like it, but why does it cost so much? And it was a paper mache rabbit that took me like quite a while to make. And, um, but it's like, why would you say that to an artist? It's not like I was asking a thousand dollars for it. Even if I was, who are you to question how much an artist charges for her or his art, you know? It's a personal thing when you're, when you're uh, pricing your own artwork. So yeah, that's it. But yeah, you get the point of what I'm doing. You want to make sure it dries and then you get, unless you get paint smeared all over your hands, you know, it's a messy job, painting. <laughs> Art can be messy, but it's a fun kind of mess, you know, and it gets you out of this, like, uh, everything has to be needed in place all the time. You know, it's like, you just got to take time out and let things breathe and just uh, see what happens, you know? We just worry about too many things these days that we have no control over and sometimes we just gotta let go and know that we're doing the best that we can with what we have regardless of what's going on in politics regardless of what's going on in media and all these celebrities and stuff this is all distractions distractions to keep you um, occupied and unfocused from why you're really here on this planet. I mean, why? What is it that you like doing? That, I mean, that's where you can start, is figuring out what you like to do. And if what you like to do involves art, then just by all means do it. Don't wait for anybody to give you permission to do it. There's a lot of people that wonder if you have to like be trained to be an artist. Do you have to go to all this schooling? No, you don't, you know. I went to schooling, I went, I talked about this before, but I, I uh, took art classes in my junior and senior year of high school. I did really good, I had a good teacher. But then when I got into college, junior college, and took art classes, it was much different. And the teachers were more, um, just the teachers that I had seemed more narcissistic, and they were more, seemed like they were envious of the students that they got to create and they had to teach because I had this one art teacher where she would just uh, while the students were doing their assignment she would be doing creating art as well I'm not saying that's a bad thing I'm just saying it just seemed like some art teachers are doing it because they need the money and not so much because they want to be an, be a teacher they'd rather be creating art than teaching, so. I may be wrong about that, but that was the vibe that I got from that specific teacher that I had at that college that I went to. People get discouraged when they have bad instruction from a teacher, especially art, and so they decide to just stop and not even approach it anymore because they think they're not any good because that art teacher said that they weren't. Uh, that's that's not a good thing to do. Just keep going. If you think it looks good, keep going with it. Because a lot of times you can't just rely on what people have to tell you, their opinions. You gotta go with what intuitively feels right for you. 
especially when it comes to art. For me, art's very intuitive, for sure. So yeah, just continuing with these bones and letting the other, the two purple bones dry, if you've been keeping up. So just patterns on it, pretty easy to do. When it dries, you're gonna put um, a solution on it called Mod Podge, um, and I'll show you that soon. Are these dry? These are dry enough to put designs on it. So these purple bones have dried. I'm going to put some designs on it. I might do something different than the spirals. Um, just have to see what works intuitively. How to decide what kind of design to make on there. I don't, I just kind of like, just go for it. <laughs> Not really think about it. And the design comes once I start going at it. If you wanted to go further, in learning about specific symbols and designs. You can do that, look that online. Um, like I talked about the Dinkra symbols, they're African uh, symbols that you can put onto these. You can use the runes, uh, runic symbols. So yeah, the sky's the limit with these bones, with these painted bones. <laughs> Sometimes I like just shapes, you know. Right now I'm doing this kind of thing. This kind of design on it. I don't know how how uh, elaborate people have gotten with doing this. This myself, I I didn't look this up to figure out, oh, I think I'll paint some bones, no. I just thought of it myself, because it was like one time, there was like all these bo bones piled up from a chicken dinner, which I didn't participate in because I don't eat chicken or meat, only meat I eat is fish, like I said. But I was like, what if I painted some really intricate designs on them? Because the texture of the bow is, I guess you would say porous would be the word for them because it, it absorbs the paint really well, it seems, or nail enamel, whatever you use to paint on it. So then I started experimenting with it and then uh, I started incorporating it into my art by adding these bones to my dolls. And then uh, after I did that, I started thinking, well, maybe I could put them onto my um, put them on to my handbags that I make. So here we go. So yeah, you get the point of these. Um, they're pretty easy to make, um, but they take a lot of time and care. And after they dry and you put the Mod Podge on them, you're gonna want them to dry for, give them two days to dry. And if you're in a very like humid climate, it may take longer, could even take a week to dry. So this isn't the kind of project that you're like, just whizzing through. You just, you're doing it because it's fun and it's creative time for you. So you're not really worried about when you're gonna get it done. So, yeah. So that's that's that. I'm gonna end this tutorial and probably make an, another one showing you how I use the Mod Podge on it to seal it. But um, yeah, you get the you get the point. It's pretty easy. It just takes time. And let me show you the other ones that were finished. So I'm gonna put some coats of Mod Podge on it let it dry and then I'll probably try to figure out how to incorporate it into jewelry because I want to start making like earrings along with necklaces. So I thought bone jewelry would be nice. Chicken bone jewelry. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for the likes and shares and thank you for your kind comments. Leave your comments down below what you think about this today's art project. Um, have you ever done anything like this before? Uh, this is like the ultimate in recycling. <laughs> Alrighty guys, I will see you soon. Peace.